Hello everybody, it's Jamie from Old Shipping Lines. Welcome back to a new video. Today, we're diving into one tragic wreck of World War II, the sinking of the SS Slamat. This Dutch ocean liner, once a proud symbol of the Royal Rotterdam Lloyd Line. She would meet her fate in 1941 during the chaos of the Battle of Greece with countless lives lost in her sinking, forever marking her wreck as the Slamat Disaster. This fine vessel would be owned by the Dutch company the Royal Rotterdam Lloyd Line. The ship would be built by the shipbuilders, the Royal Company de Schelde. Now, let's talk about the specifics of this ship. The gross tonnage of this vessel would be 11,000 406 gross registered tons. Her length would be 482.5 feet. The vessel would have had a beam of 62.0 feet. Her boilers were equipped with oil burning furnaces and her engines were steam turbines that powered her twin screws through double reduction gearing giving the vessel a speed of 15 knots. She was also fitted with a submarine signaling apparatus, which was considered an alternative to radio at the time. Additionally, she had wireless direction finding equipment. In 1931, the Slamet underwent a refit and was extended by 27.6 feet, which slightly raised her tonnage. This modification also boosted her speed to 17 knots. When it comes to her colors, as you can see, she didn't boast the grand colors that other ocean liners had during her time. During peacetime, the Slamat carried KRL's livery of a dove gray hull, white superstructure and black funnels. There was a reason for this. The ships of the Royal Rotterdam Lloyd Line mainly sailed to warmer climates, such as the Dutch East Indies. If she had been painted with the livery of the Atlantic Ocean Liners and sailed to warmer ports, the heat would have caused the paint to melt off the ship. The livery of the Royal Rotterdam Lloyd Line was designed to survive the heat, the ship would be completed in 1924. When World War II erupted, the Netherlands remained neutral. In mid-October 1939, the ship Slamat set sail from Rotterdam towards the East Indies, with stops in Lisbon, Cape Verde, Cape Town, Mauritius, Sebang and Singapore, before arriving in Batavia, the capital of the Dutch East Indies on November 30th. On December 1st, the Slama departed Batavia for Italy, which was also neutral. The voyage included stops in Sabang, Aden, and Port Said before reaching Genoa on December 21st. There, the ship celebrated Christmas in 1939 and welcomed the new year of 1940. The SS Slamat left Genoa on January 10th, 1940 and made her way back to the East Indies with stops in Suez, Aden and Sabang before arriving in Batavia on February 1st. In May 1940, Germany swiftly conquered the Netherlands within a week, prompting the Dutch monarchy and government to evacuate to London. During this period, Germany detained KRL's managing director. As a result, the company moved the registration of their ships, including the Slamat, from Rotterdam to Batavia. On July 6th, KRL ship the SS Indrapura departed from Batavia, bound for Surabaya in eastern Java, followed by the Slamat on July 19th. Both liners then sailed to the Philippines which was neutral at the time. The Indrapoira took the lead, leaving Surabaya on July 26th and arriving in Manila on July 31st. The Slamat arrived in Manila three days later, on August 3rd. 
by which time the Indrapura had already departed for Australia. The following day, the Slamat set off for Australia as well. Both liners stopped at Thursday Island, Queensland, before reaching Sydney Harbour, with the Indrapura arriving on August 13th, and the Slamat on August 17th in Sydney, they joined two other Dutch ocean liners. They would be joined by the Dutch vessels the SS Christian Huygens and the SS New Holland. Together, these ships embarked 4,315 Australian troops. On September 12th, the Dutch vessels left Sydney for Fremantle in Western Australia, where they formed convoy U.S. Five. This convoy departed Fremantle on September 22nd and reached Suez on October 12th. The SS Indrapuera and the SS Slamat continued through the Suez Canal, called at Port Said, and on the 17th of October reached Haifa in Palestine. In September 1940, Italy's invasion of Egypt prompted a need for reinforcements from the British Empire's dominions and allies. Consequently, several Dutch troop ships began focusing on transporting British Empire forces across the Indian Ocean to the Near East. The Indrapoera and the Slamat departed Haifa on October 21st, reached Port Said the following day, and then navigated through the Suez Canal. Over the next six months, these two KRL vessels operated in the Indian Ocean, ferrying British Empire troops from India and Ceylon to Egypt. The Indrapoira and the Slamat spent Christmas 1940 and New Year 1941 in Bombay on January 14th, 1941. They arrived in Colombo to join Convoy US eight bound for Suez. This large-scale troop movement included seven British and five Dutch troop ships, along with two British cargo vessels. The other Dutch ships in the convoy were the MS Christian Huygens, the SS Johan de Witt, and the SS New Zealand. Among the British ships was the flagship QSM V Dominion Monarch which was the largest liner operating in the Indian Ocean at the time. Convoy US-8 departed Colombo on January 16th and arrived in Suez on January 28th. Following this convoy, Indrapoira and Slamat continued their operations in the Indian Ocean until April 1941. At that point, Indrapoira sailed via Durban to the Caribbean and the United States, while Slamat returned to the Mediterranean. Now we shall move on to her sinking. In April 1941, Germany and Italy launched invasions of Yugoslavia and Greece. After 10 days of intense fighting, the British Empire began planning the evacuation of 60,000 troops from Greece. During this period, the Slamat had been making shuttle trips between Suez and Port Sudan. By April 23rd, she had arrived in the Mediterranean Sea and, on April 24th, joined convoy AG-14 from Alexandria to Greece. As the convoy entered Greek waters, it split to reach various embarkation points. The SS Slamat, along with the British India Line-managed troop ship, the SS Khedive Ismail was assigned to join the cruiser HMS Calcutta and several destroyers for operations in Nauplia and Toulon on the Argolic Gulf in eastern Peloponnese. Before their arrival, a troop ship had run aground in Nauplia Bay, obstructing access to the port. The ship was destroyed in an air raid. As a result, ships had to anchor in the bay with boats ferrying troops from the shore. On their approach to Nauplia, the Slamet's convoy was bombed, causing significant damage to Slamet's superstructure. 
On the evening of April 26th, three cruisers, four destroyers, and the troop ships, the SS Khadiv Ismail and the SS Slamat, were stationed in the Bay of Nauplia. The only available tenders were one landing craft, local caiques, and the ship's own boats. Two cruisers and two destroyers managed to embark nearly 2,500 troops, but due to the slow rate of embarkation, the Khediv Ismail did not get the opportunity to load any troops. At 0300 hours, the cruiser Calcutta ordered all ships to set sail, but the Slamat chose to ignore the order and continued with the troop embarkation. The Calcutta and the Khediv Ismail departed at 0400 hours, and the Slamat followed at 0415 hours, by which time she had successfully embarked around 500 troops, approximately half of her capacity. The convoy proceeded south through the Argolic Gulf when at approximately 06, 45 hours or 07, 15 hours it came under attack by Luftwaffe aircraft. The assault began with BF-109 fighters, followed by Ju-87 dive bombers and Ju-88 and Du-17 bombers. A 250 kilogram bomb exploded between the Slamats bridge and forward funnel, igniting a fire on the ship. The explosion also damaged her water system, making it difficult for the crew to control the blaze. Another bomb hit the Slamat, causing her to list to starboard. Captain Chaling Luidinga of the Slamat ordered the ship abandoned. The bombing and subsequent fire had damaged several lifeboats and life rafts, and the remaining boats and rafts were launched during a second Stuka attack. The destroyer HMS Hotspur reported witnessing four bombs striking the SS Slamat. Two lifeboats capsized one due to overloading and another when the destroyer Diamond had to accelerate away to avoid an air attack while still in the process of transferring survivors. Some of the survivors in the water were targeted by aircraft machine gun fire. The rest of the convoy continued its course while the cruiser Calcutta rescued some survivors and directed the destroyer Diamond to assist with additional rescues. By 0815 hours, the Diamond was still engaged in rescue operations and facing ongoing attacks. At 0916 hours, three destroyers from Crete arrived to reinforce the convoy, prompting Calcutta to dispatch HMS Rynek to support the Diamond. By 0925 hours, the Diamond reported that she had rescued the majority of the survivors and was heading toward Suda Bay. HMS Rynek arrived alongside the Diamond around 1000 hours and requested air cover at 1025 hours. The Diamond, accompanied by the Rynek, then returned to the Slamat reaching the stricken vessel at approximately 1100 hours. They located two lifeboats from the Slamat and rescued the people aboard. By this time, the Slamat was ablaze from bow to stern. To put her out of her misery, the Diamond fired a torpedo into Slamat's port side, sinking her in a final act of mercy. At this point, the Diamond was carrying around 600 survivors from the Slamat, including Captain Luidinga. Around 13-15 hours, a staffle of Ju-87 bombers appeared from the sun and launched a surprise attack on the two destroyers. The Diamond was struck by two bombs, which damaged the ship, destroyed both of her lifeboats, and sank her within eight minutes. The Rynek was hit by three bombs. She capsized to port and sank in 10 to 15 minutes. The Rynek managed to launch her whaler and deploy her three Carly floats. Unfortunately, several men in the Carly floats perished either from their injuries 
or from drowning in the rough sea. Morris Waldron, the commissioned engineer of the Rhineck, took charge of her whaler and set off eastward past Cape Malias, towing two Carly floats with their occupants. As the evening progressed, the wind picked up, causing the floats to collide with the boat. Reluctantly, Waldron had to abandon the floats and cast them adrift. After 1900 hours on April 27th, Vice Admiral Henry Pritham Whipple, in charge of light forces, grew worried when the Diamond had not returned to Suda Bay and was not responding to radio signals. The Rhineck had been instructed to maintain radio silence, so no attempts were made to contact her. Pritham Whipple dispatched the destroyer HMS Griffin to the location where the SS Slamat had been lost. That night, Griffin located 14 survivors in two Carly floats and in the morning she found additional floats and four more survivors. The ship then transported the survivors to Crete. According to the last living survivor from the Slamat, Royal Army Service Corps veteran George Dexter, he and three other men were rescued by the cruiser HMS Orion after the Rhineck was sunk. The survivors from Rhineck's whaler made their way to Crete in three stages. On April 28th, they initially aimed for the island of Milos in the Aegean Sea, but too exhausted to continue, they landed at Ananis Rock, approximately 13 nautical miles southeast of Milos. There, they encountered a kike carrying Greek refugees and British soldiers evacuated from Piraeus, who were hiding by day and sailing only at night to avoid detection. That evening, everyone departed from Ananes Rock, heading south towards Crete, with the most passengers aboard the kike and five being towed in the whaler. On April 29th, the Kaik encountered a small landing craft that had departed from Porto Rafti near Athens. This craft took on all the passengers from both the Kaik and the whaler, and the next day they reached Suda Bay. In total, nearly 1,000 passengers perished with the loss of the Slamat, the Diamond and the Rhineck, out of the approximately 500 soldiers embarked on the Slamat, only eight survived of her crew, which included 193 personnel and 21 Australian and New Zealand Dems gunners and NZF Medical Corps members, 11 survived. From Diamond's complement of 166, 20 survived, while 27 out of Rhineck's 106 crew members survived. And that marks the end of a video, my friends. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel, as that would help out the channel a lot. Now, if you have any thoughts, comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below, as I absolutely love reading your comments. And please let me know in the comment section down below as well what ships you would like me to cover in the future. Now be as well sure to check out our social media pages. We are on Twitter, we are on Instagram and we also recently have a website oldshippinglines.com where we have articles of the ships we cover and we have book reviews as well. I think you will enjoy the website very much. Now, with that out of the way, guys, I wish you all a good night or day, wherever you are. Stay safe, stay happy, and we will see each other on the next video. Goodbye, my friends.